Well, good afternoon, ladies. Good uh, late afternoon, early evening. Uh, thanks for tuning in to today's webinar. My name is Todd Gregory. I'm with Gregory Financial. Um, as you can see behind the screen here, this is my office. I'm a real person. This is a little bit, this is our new normal because of COVID and uh, the political unrest and civil unrest. I mean, uh, good news on this uh, webinar tonight. You do not have to wear a mask. I don't think whatever I might have, which I don't have anything, what is going to get here through the screen. So I wanted to just take a few seconds, a minute here to introduce myself where you can see me, uh, recognize that I am a real person uh, talking to you here in Springfield, Missouri. I am not in another state or at the beach, although I'd like to be there. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for being on the program, the webinar tonight. There's a lot of things you could be doing versus sitting here listening to me. I'll try to make this as interactive as possible. Doing webinars today is um, I, again, I guess our new normal, the interaction's a little difficult, but I'll try to have some interaction uh, between you ladies and myself to where you can go on the right-hand side of your screen and enter some information so we can have a little fun as we move through here. Um, I'm not going to be here too long and uh, try to give you some great information as it pertains to, to retirement and specifically ladies um, looking to retire or, or just get back into shape as far as retirement is concerned. So I'm going to click on over. I wanted you to be able to see me and then I'm going to click over here to our presentation here. One second, please. All right, ladies. So as you can see here, the first slide up here, Women's Retirement Roadmap. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing the Women's Retirement Roadmap? So this is the first uh, limited, you know, able ability to communicate back and forth since we're doing this via a webinar. But the question is this, who dies first in a family? Is it the males or is it the females? Now, I would imagine that most of you would agree with me wherever you're sitting. And by the way, these webinars are funny. You may have the cat zooming by at your house. You may have the dog and cat fighting at your house, or you may have multiple uh, screens open at one time. I'm going to try to do my best to hold your attention. Um, I'm going to introduce to you Michaela here in a second as well. She's my moderator. If you happen to get bumped off, just re-log in. I'll try to make this again, as I said, interactive so you stay focused uh, on today's task. But, you know, Women's Retirement Roadmap, why am I doing this? I imagine you all answered that question that ladies or females um, outlast the males, the, the males die first. And I'm going to say that's wrong uh, because what I believe of 26 years now in this business, um, the one who is left behind is the one left behind picking up the pieces who took care of the finances. So it's it's my job to try to help those that are left behind to pick up the pieces and put a plan together. And as you're going to see, ladies, you're the ones that are left holding the financial bag, as it were. Um, why do I do these events? Again, I've done events at colleges. I've done them at, 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 at uh, restaurants, um, you know, you name it, manufacturing plants. Uh, now we're going to, to webinars. But the reason I do these is, I'm, frankly, I'm tired of seeing people live retirement based upon how the markets move. And I'm going to share more about that as this webinar goes on. Um, you know, they, they live retirement based upon how the market's going. So if the market's going really good, they're happy. But if the market loses money, oh, man, I'm sad. And I'm tired of seeing that and I want to help people out. So I want to start with a story real quick. I was born and raised in Nebraska, a small uh, farming community. Please don't hold that against me, but uh, I'm out of Nebraska. I love the Ozarks. Been here a good long while. Um, still like the Cornhuskers, so I hope you don't hold that against me. Um, they're not a very good football team, but I still root for them. Um, but anyway, the small community I grew up in, my grandparents owned a business called Gregory's Carpets and Draperies. And like a lot of, I guess they call it nuclear families, um, the male, uh, my grandfather ran the business took care of the finances. My grandmother raised the kids, took care of the kids. She probably worked harder than my grandfather, didn't get a paycheck, but nonetheless, she wasn't involved with finances. Now, again, in some ways, I don't like sharing this example because my grandparents, what I really remember about them is nothing more than fun. They were the epitome of fantastic grandparents. Being in this job now for 26 years, hearing the stories of what they went through, as they approached retirement, my grandfather made some really bad financial choices. Uh, extrapolate forward, make a long story short. He lived to around 70, mid 70s, and my grandmother lived well into her 90s. Um, what I remember of her having was two things. One was Social Security and about $25,000 in an account. 
So he had made some poor financial decisions. She was left to pick up the pieces. She had no idea the decisions he had made. Perhaps had she been more involved, she could have been at least a sounding board and maybe got him to make some different uh, financial decisions and they would have been in better shape. Now, I don't say that again to slight my grandparents, but let me just share this again. My grandma was required to move in with my parents and lived a good number of years with my parents. Um, why is that interesting? Why is that uh, a part of this? Well, my guess is as we look to retire, we've got goals, we've got thoughts, we've got aspirations, we've got ideas of what we want to do in retirement, whether that's travel, whether that's um, you know seeing family or whatever. No, my grandmother never complained. Um, she never certainly she ne certainly never shared with me her grandson um, mistakes perhaps that she had made or that she, what she wanted to do. We just had fun. But my guess is she had more ideas about retirement than just moving in with my my parents. So um, as you're going to see tonight, as this unfolds, this is straight focused at ladies, females, single, widow, divorced. And if you're married today, uh, you're going to see some things why you're going to be a big part of this as as well. So um, I'm going to show you some strategies so that you'll so that you'll learn some strategies that will allow you to reduce tax on your IRAs so that you can make sure that most of your money that you worked hard for goes to the people who you want it to so that you can keep more for yourself uh, because you worked very hard for a long time and because you want to use it uh, to fund your dream retirement. And these are the things that you want to do. So really quick, um, I'm going to put this slide up here again, just to show you that I'm a real person. I'm not sitting behind a computer, you know, in my undershorts um, out in the middle of nowhere. This is my family. I live right in the Ozarks here. This is my family, my wife and my kiddos. I run Gregory Financial, been in this business now for 26 years. My office is here off of Battlefield and uh, Justice Jewelers, uh, Highway 65 and Battlefield right in this area. Um, I want you to see this so I'm, you know that I'm a real person. Um, next slide here is Michaela. She's behind the scenes today running running things, uh, hopefully keeping me straight so we don't uh, crash or whatever as, as it pertains to webinars. Um, so she's my administrative assistant. Fantastic what she does. Um, you get a chance to meet and visit with her. Some of you had already had a chance to, to visit with her today on the phone as, as we reached out to you all. So um, we'll get to moving. Oh, one more. Notice the audience. To keep all of my regulators and compliance people happy, I have to share this with you. Um, I'm a licensed insurance producer. I'm a licensed investment advisor. Um, today's presentation is general information. Don't take anything from what I'm sharing and go out and run and do it. Um, I don't know your situation. Uh, I, I know, well, nothing about anybody really that's on the webinar today. So don't take this advice and just run out and do it. I'm not a, a CPA. I'm not an attorney. So I'm not giving you advice on either direction of those things. And the very last paragraph just talks about we're trying to provide accurate information. As you've seen what's going on in the political uh, environment, the civil uh, unrest, uh, the, 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 the COVID situation, things are changing constantly. So do the numbers in finance. So we're trying to provide accurate information, but things change. Uh, so just kind of uh, take it at face value, uh, take it under advisement, so to speak. So there's the note to the audience. All right. So what to expect on this webinar, ladies? Um, you've probably been to some dinner seminars in the past uh, where you're asked to go to a, at a one hour uh, appointment somewhere, drive somewhere. Um, let's make this very easy. At the conclusion, or even in a minute here, I think that uh, um, Michaela is going to put up on the screen on the right side of your screen. You can schedule an appointment to come and visit with me. Let me say that differently. You can schedule a time to visit, have a phone call with me, a retirement strategy call. And what we're going to do on that call is just go over uh, this questionnaire. When we get on a one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to talk about income planning. We're going to talk about investment planning. We're going to talk about tax planning. And if you have a whole lot of concerns, you're very concerned or you're not concerned at all. Um, that's what we're just going to go through this on a 15 minute retirement strategy call. Simple, uh, straightforward, easy. I'll call you on the number that you provide me. And this is what we will talk about. Certainly, if you answer all those questions, not concerned, there's probably no reason to go any further. Um, you may have some questions, in which case I'll answer those questions and get you the information you want. 
Um, but that'll be the conclusion of it. If you have other ideas, very concerned, somewhat concerned, we can we can get deeper into that at that time. But for today's purposes of this webinar, a 15 minute retirement strategy call. And if you want to go ahead and and click on schedule now, you can do that. It goes right to my calendar. You can pick the time that you'd like to visit with me and I'll call you with a number uh, that you provide. You may be saying, how could I possibly do that? I just meeting you. I don't know anything about you ladies. Here's the deal. Uh, since this COVID thing hit, here months ago, we've been inundated with phone calls of what we should do, what's going to happen to taxes, who the president's going to be, what's going to happen in the market, and on and on and on. And sometimes I'm getting referrals from my clients, uh, these uh, uh, people that are getting referred to me, that every one of my clients comes to me from another broker or brokerage. That's just the way it is. Whether that person is left, maybe they passed on, uh, maybe they got fired, um, uh, they got out of the business, or they just want a second opinion. So if you know already um, that you want to have a 15 minute retirement strategy call, go ahead and sign up there on the right hand side. The next thing is this. Um, let me ask you this question, ladies. Do you know your social security number? Do you know your date of birth? Do you know your own phone number? I would say yes, yes, and yes. Well, one more question I'm gonna ask you, do you know your risk number? You might think to yourself, well, what the heck is that? Um, it's the number associated with your personal level of risk. Everyone should know and add this number to your memory. It's regarding your finances. Um, so as a bonus for sticking around to the end of this webinar, I'll give you the opportunity to obtain your own personal risk number. So at the end of the webinar, you'll be able to know your social security number, your phone number, your date of birth, and your risk number. I'll extrapolate on that a little bit later as we get going through the program. All right, so moving on. Ladies, these are the statistics. Um, this is interesting. 90% of women will eventually uh, be solely in char charge of household finances. Interesting. I've been in this business now for 26 years. It kind of makes me wonder why we don't talk twice or three times or five times more to the ladies than we do to the guys. Now that may sound a little weird, but this is a reality, ladies. 90% of women will end up taking care of their finances. Now you may be recently widowed, or divorced and you've been thrown into that, or you could be single and already taking care of that the entire time. But this is a reality. And yet on the right-hand side, you see that 20%, only 20% of women feel really prepared to make those financial decisions. So it's my job, it's our job as advisors to step in and help you feel exceedingly uh, confident about your finances. As I mentioned earlier about my grandparents, where my grandmother was not involved with the finances. Um, I think Michaela, if you want to put the, one of the polls up there real quick about whether you feel like you should be more involved uh, with your finances. You may be single, divorced, widowed, or even married. How involved are you? And based upon these metrics, do you feel like you should be more involved with financial strategy? So go ahead, ladies. And if you just click on that, we'll take a few seconds and, and, and pull in that information. All right, take a few more seconds here. Okay. All right, ladies. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close that poll. I got a few more people voting here off to the right hand side. Okay. Any more? Any more? All right. All right. Well, honestly, it, it shows that you believe that you do. That was the, the biggest poll was I do you need to be more involved with your financial strategies. And I think that's that's the right answer. And that's why I'm here today to try to help give you some ideas on becoming part of that. Now, earlier, again, I mentioned my grandparents, my grandma that really wasn't part of that. Here's the deal. When we lose somebody, uh, we go through a lot of things. And typically, what did I say? Does it male or female die first? We said the male. And I said, it's the one that's in charge of the finances. So if we go to the next slide here, I actually had an elderly lady come up to me at one of my seminars she had asked me to help her because her husband had invested their money all over the place and didn't have things titled correctly and taxes were all fouled. And in general, everything was a mess when he passed away. In fact, everything was such a mess. And she was so frustrated that she said she almost wished he hadn't died. Now, hopefully that gave you a little chuckle at home. But the reality of it, think about this for a second. When you're thrown in the midst of losing your loved one and all this and you don't have any idea what finances are about or how to take care of them, it is frustrating to the point of saying, you know, I almost wish he hadn't died. Now we know that's not the case, but 
kind of some levity in the middle of this. So uh, real quick, another poll, ladies, I want to put up for you real quick is, as you see these ladies going into retirement, uh, what activities do you see yourself doing in retirement? So off to the right of your screen, I know there's a lot of activities you could be doing, but go ahead and click on that real quick. I'd like to see what most of you are interested in doing during retirement. Take a few seconds with that. Got myself a drink. I tell you about for myself, uh, I don't know if I'll ever retire, not because I can't, because I, but probably because I don't want to and my wife won't let me. Um, but if we do some things, going to the lake, love going to the lake, part of the reason we moved down here with family, want to spend time there, love the heat, love the beaches, probably spend as much as time as I can at one of those two areas. And then I like to play in the snow up in, in uh, Colorado, love going snow skiing, although my body's telling me that I should probably give it up. Um, those are the things that I'd like to do. So it looks like right now, most of you want to travel. So my goal is your goal is to um, get the most out of your retirement to be able to allow you to travel where you want to travel. All right. So this is specifically towards the ladies that are, are married that are on this uh, webinar right now. Financial planning is often more important for women than men. Oh, what are you talking about? Well, we know now because men die first, typically. And what if you're left with a plan that really doesn't work for you? Here's a sobering statistic for you married ladies. 80% of men die while they're married. And 80% of women die single. So I'm not here to cry, you know, fire in a crowded theater or cause a bunch of, of, of fear or anything like that. But uh, ladies, if, if you're married, um, you need to make sure you have an income uh, plan in place that's designed really to hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Number one fear I mean, of, of retirees today. Here's my squirreling. I'm squirreling to another topic here. But the number one fear of retirees is the fear of running out of money. It's not death. Death is number two on the list. The number one fear of retirees is uh, running out of money before we run out of life. Um, so having an income plan is very important. I'll get to more of that in a minute. Comfort level with risk. If you're married, your husband may have a different risk level than you do. And I would say by and large, men typically 26 years in this business are more risky, probably to a fault. Honestly, I, the ladies that I have and I've worked with for a good number of years, they're more uh, loyal. Um, they um, frugal is probably the wrong word, but they're, they're more in line. So when you set up a plan, they stick with it. They're not... Um, not uh, uh, distracted by the bright, shiny object. Hey, let's go do this now. Let's go do this now. And guys seem to be that way. So ladies, I think do a better job at that. But you need to get in line with your risk and your husband's risk. Final wishes. Um, I had a client here. Sadly, both he and her have passed away at a young age. Cancer was the culprit there. Um, but I remember when she passed away, actually, she uh, passed before he did, which is a little opposite of what we're talking about here. But she planned everything right down to the music at the funeral. And I don't want to get morbid here. And that sounds more. But the reality is, again, you're in a tough time. I've battled through this in the last 18 months. We lost a family member unexpectedly. We hadn't thought of all of these things. And you're, you're thrown in the midst. It was a young person. We were thrown into the, in, into the middle of planning all this stuff when you had no idea this was coming. Uh, beneficiary planning. Ladies, if, you, if, you, if you're married, I see this all the time, time and time again, 26 years in the business, something happens to me, it goes to my wife, something happens to my wife, it goes to me. If we both pass away, it goes to our children, equally share and share alike. And that makes logical, sim simple sense, but that's also, uh, you've possibly disinherited accidentally your grandkids. So if you've done that, again, schedule the, excuse me, the 15 minute phone call off to the right, because there's some things to do to make sure very simple, very easy, just a piece of paper, we can make sure you don't accidentally disinherit your grandkids. And social security. Again, if you're married, we've seen where ladies uh, worked for a few years and then they stayed home, took care of the kids where they weren't contributing to Social Security, and then they started working. So there were some zeros on there. So we need to go back. We need to do a Social Security analysis on you to make sure you're going to get the most out of Social Security you possibly can get. All right. So this this uh, slide here, this this couple reminds me the typical scenario. You've got grandpa and grandma enjoying uh, time uh, with the grandkids. And I use this to, to share a real life example with you. I had a, a gal who was referred to me for security purposes and for uh, uh, privacy purposes. I'll call her Ann. Ann called me in, refer in reference to one of my clients. 
and you could tell she was distraught. Uh, long story short, she had lost her husband uh, a, a relatively short period of time ago, and she didn't know what to do. Uh, so what what had happened was this. She was at work one day. He was at work one day and she gets a call from his work. And then consequently, the hospital, he had he had uh, uh, passed out, had a seizure, you know, loaded him up, took him to the hospital. So she gets out of work as soon as she can. She goes to the hospital, uh, gets to the room. By that time, he was rallying. They had run a battery of tests on him, taking care of him and all that. And he had actually rallied and come to and they had conversations. And like all of us were like, we dodged a bullet. Everything is, is, is good now. Um, until the doctor walked in and delivered the message that he had an inoperable brain tumor. Five weeks later, he had passed away. She didn't know what to do. She had all of these, God bless her. Cause she brought in all of her statements, whatever she could find. And basically just threw them on my desk and said, Todd, I need help. I don't know. I don't know how much taxes we're paying. I don't know how we file. Um, I don't know what these accounts are. I don't know what they're invested in. Ladies need to be more part of the financial planning process because, again, ladies are outliving the men. This is a common, common situation for a lot of married situations out there. Now, if you're single um, and you're here tonight, you're married, divorced, widowed, you should be con uh, financially confident no matter what's going to happen. If this happens, you're prepared for it. If this happens, you're already prepared for it. That's my job to help you do that. So I'm going to show you some strategies to go through um, to help you get back on track financially if you feel like you're off track or just do be a second opinion for you to make sure you're on the right track. And to start that conversation, I, I, I show this mountain chart here. I'm going to call it Mount Everest. And you see the pre-retirement accumulation is on the way up and the retirement distribution is on the way down. So let's analyze this. If, if you were to, well, let's think about the climbers that go up Mount Everest. What do they do? Do they prepare to get to the summit? Absolutely, they do. They, you know, think of shoes. They're going to get shoes that are going to be warm, number one, waterproof, number two, uh, probably flexible because it, I don't think having blisters climbing Mount Everest is going to be a good thing. So they want to be durable as well. And then they got to get those spikes so they don't uh, slip on the ice, the best spikes and all that kind of thing. They're going to, same thing with clothes. You got to have breathable clothes things that can withstand wind, uh, uh, snow, rain, ice. Um, maybe they breathe so you don't break a sweat and get freezing cold because your sweat's getting cold. Um, they're going to have oxygen masks, oxygen tanks. Um, they're going to plan out their route to the top of Mount Everest base camp, second camp. Um, they're going to have Sherpas helping carry their stuff, a guide to get to the top, ladders, ropes, they got to prepare their mind. They got to prepare their body to get to the top. All of this preparation is to get to the top, make it to the summit. Very similar to your retirement. For years, you guys have been striving, saving, sacrificing, doing without, putting money in IRAs, putting money in 401ks, putting money in CDs, savings account, whatever it is. You've been doing all of this to reach the summit, your pinnacle to start retiring. Well, let me ask you this question as it pertains to climbing a mountain. Now, maybe you've never climbed a mountain. I really haven't ever climbed a mountain. Um, but thinking about Mount Everest, I don't know if you've ever heard this or not, but and you won't be able to respond because we're on a webinar, of course. But when do most climbers die on their way up the mountain or the way down the mountain? Now, I don't have a poll question for that, but I think that every one of us would probably say on the way down, it's just maybe common sense or maybe you've heard that. And you might scratch your head and say, why? Why do they die on the way down? Well, think of it for a second. We're all jacked up. We spent all this time getting the best equipment, best roadmap, best path, best guy, best everything. And we're the king of the world. You know, we're on the top of the mountain. I mean, we've done it. We've done things that not a lot of people have done. And they were laser focused to get to the top of this mountain. Much like your retirement, you have done all these things laser focused. Well, you have to remain laser focused to get off the mountain as well because again that's when most of the climbers die they lose that focus uh, it's almost equally as hard if not harder because they're tired they're worn out worn out to get off the mountain same thing with retirement distribution what i see 26 years in this business happen is this folks have acquired these dollars and as i started this program tonight i says i'm tired of having people live their retirement based upon what the market does. They, oftentimes it's guys, they feel, oh, 
I got a million dollars in an IRA. I got 750. I got 300. I got $3 million. And ladies, no one retires off of assets. No one retires off of wealth. Hmm. What are you talking about, Todd? There's three stages you're going to go through in retirement. One is called, I call it the go-go years. So say from age 60 to 75 years, you're going to go. You're going to go on vacation, go to Europe, go to Italy, uh, go see the kids. You're going to build a second house. You're going to play tennis. You're going to play golf. You're going to join a country club. You're going to go. That's 60 to 65. And that's going to take a certain amount of money, maybe in the most of any three, all these three stages here that I'm going to talk about. The next stage is the slow-go years. We got the go-go years. Now we're in the slow-go years. <clears throat> from age, call it 75 to age 85. And that's where, you know what? I'm healthy enough that I can go do things. I just simply choose not to go. Uh, maybe I wanted to go to the movie, but it's raining tonight and I don't like the glare from the other car's headlights on the rainy, you know, kind of glistening road. So I don't go to the movie. So you, you, you can, but you don't, the slow go years. And then the years from age 85 to age 100. And I call that the no-go years because we check into some building that we never check out of, if you know what I mean. We end up going to see St. Peter um, at the pearly gates. So with that, ladies, um, you don't live off of the slow-go or the, the go-go, the slow-go and the no-go years off of your assets. You have to have income for 20, 30, maybe as many as 40 years of your life. You got what? Every week, every two weeks, every month. You got a paycheck. And so that's what you need to have during retirement. Let me let me put this in a better perspective. I can't. I don't have a name for you, ladies. If you're listening to this here, and again, the cat may just have ran by, or the dog's fighting with a cat right now. If I could get your attention for just a second, I don't have a name that I can give you, but I would be willing to place money on that this happened a few months ago, February, when COVID nineteen hit the United States. Do you remember what happened to the stock market? We had the steepest, fastest, quickest. Uh, drop in the stock market we've ever had in stock market history. Never had happened before. And I would be willing to place money on the fact that somewhere in the United States and some family, whether they were single or whether they were married, this scenario happened. Wife went to husband and said, hey, are we going to go on that trip? And the husband responded something like this. He said, well, we were, honey, but the market just lost a lot of money and I don't feel like we can go do that. We might need that money just in case. That may have been that single person and had the same internal conversation. I can't go buy that car. I can't go part, be part of that country club. I can't go do this because I might need that money just in case. Like I said at the beginning of the program, this is what drives me crazy. Everybody's living their retirement based upon what the market is going to do for them or isn't doing for them. Those folks that live in a just-in-case retirement, they continue to live in a just-in-case environment today and next week and next month. And so pretty soon they've reached age 75 and they've not done anything because they're scared to death they might lose money in the market. It's better to set up a paycheck for you, just like you were used to getting 20, 30, 40 years of your pre-retirement years. Set up a paycheck um, that's going to pay for the basic living expenses of utilities, uh, taxes, insurance, uh, food, shelter, clothing, these sorts of things. So when things happen like they happened in February and we're still going through today with political, civil, and, and the plague going on, political unrest, civil unrest, and the plague, you're still getting paychecks. It does not matter what the stock market's doing. You're getting a check last month, you're getting a check this month, and then you're gonna create another check. And that's what we do. That's what I'm here for is to give you a play check. Play check is to go to, I don't know, Italy, uh, second home, golfing, uh, movies, whatever. And those are set up in, a, in, a, in an idea that's going to provide guaranteed income. No matter what happens in the stock market, you can go do what you want to do. You need a pay, uh, excuse me, a paycheck and a play check and the rest will take care of it itself. So this is what income planning used to look like. If you look at this three-legged stool, this is the way people used to retire. You had a pension, which you did not contribute to. The, the company did it all for, for you. Um, you certainly have Social Security today. And personal savings, whether that be 401k, 403b, 457, CDs, uh, money market savings account, checking account, you know, you name it, personal savings. And that's the way it was. It was pretty doggone sturdy. Well, if you look at the retirement income plan of today, Pensions are pretty much a thing of the past, which, by the way, quick squirrel for you. Um, pensions, when they were around, when the 401k was created, they were designed to complement each other, not for the 401k to replace the pension. Nonetheless, that's kind of what's taken place over the years. So we're left with 
really a two-legged stool, personal savings, 401k, 403b, 457, all the stuff that I just shared, and Social Security. Um, before I get on to the Social Security leg there that you see uh, that's a little uh, cracked there, the previous slide where it had three legs, you're basically using two economic powers. One is called actuarial science. That's based in the, on the pension, okay? And then you have market. Uh, so two economic powers, the mar power of the markets, I guess you would say, and the power of actuarial science. And those things work very well together. And I think we need to get back to that. That's how we can provide that guaranteed income to you for the rest of your retirement. So I got a question. Michaela, if you'd put up that poll real quick on Social Security. Is Social Security, do you think, is it solid or is it shaky today? Okay. 80% of you said that it is shaky. And I would tend to agree with you. Of course, none of us are going to know for absolute certain. I want it to be there. You're contributing to it. I'm contributing to it. But I want to show you a quick example. You and I all used to get um, these Social Security statements in the mail. And at some point in time, they pulled that. Not sure exactly sure why. We could have a whole other conversation about that. But you can go online at socialsecurity.gov and get your estimated benefits. And I just want to share this with you, how important it is to make sure um, make sure of your income plan and, and, and hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. So let's look at this real quick. This particular, this was a client of mine that I did back here in 2018. And for privacy purposes, left all their information off there. But at age 70, this particular person was scheduled to get roughly $3,815 a month from Social Security. They had maxed it out. Pretty doggone good. What I want to draw your attention to is down below in this highlighted area. In the second or third sentence there, it basically says the law governing benefit amounts may change because by the year 2034, the payroll taxes collected will be enough to pay only about 77% of scheduled benefits. So what does that mean? It means that if this, if we're sitting at 2034, this particular person was scheduled to get 3,800 bucks a month, but if nothing's done with the social security system, she, this person will no longer get 3,800, They'll get roughly a thousand dollars less on a monthly basis. These are things that we need to prepare for. These are things that you need to prepare for to make up those differences if this takes place. I mean, we've got national debt, we've got state debt, we've got local debt, we've got political unrest, we've got civil unrest, we've got a lot of things going on. And just to ask you, and I don't know the answers to all these things, but how does the government pay for this? Is it possible that they raise taxes? I don't know. Is it possible they lower taxes? I don't know. Um, but this is a reality that you need to prepare for. And Social Security, it's, it's a math problem. That's what I was going to share. It's a four-letter word. It's called math. They need to fix it through math. Either they've got to raise taxes or the government has to stop spending so much money. One of those things or a combination of both of them has to happen to fix this problem. Until then, it's on us. It's on you. It's on me to help you make sure that these benefits um, are as solid as they can be and your plan is in place. So real quick like there flipping through. When someone comes in and visit with, visits with us, what I find time and time again, and I understand it, um, you may not want to take the time or don't have the software to do it, but everybody kind of wonders how long is my money going to last? The biggest fear, I don't want to run out of money. So as you can see this on this analysis here, what we do, Jerry, Sherry on this, we just ran in a simple analysis and basically it shared that in 2043, when he's 81, she's 83, they're out of money. Wouldn't it be good for you to know if the assets that you have and your spending habits and inflation and social security taxation or regular taxation, how long your money's going to last? I think that would be important. Just a quick thought that jumped in my mind at the beginning, we talked about all my clients come to me from other brokers or brokerages. I'm like, well, I don't like change. No one likes change, but how about we change the word from change to improvement? How would you like to have improvement? How would you like to pay less taxes? not pay your social security back in taxation back to the government? How would you like to uh, lower risk? How would you like to have potentially better returns with lower risk? I don't know, all these things. Let's try to improve the situation. Let's not think of it so much as change because change none of, none of us like. This slide again, just takes me back to the, the, the person that's retiring. Uh, and, and I talked about this earlier for 30, 20, 30, 40 years of life, we all got a paycheck. 
and now we're retired. We're at the company party. We're excited. We're jacked up. And that person that's about ready to retire has kind of an epiphany. You know what? I've been getting these checks now for 20, 30, 40 years of my life. And come Monday, I don't get a check. This is weird. I don't have a clue how to manage my account. I don't have any idea what to draw from. I don't know how much I can afford to take. I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know how to manage them to ensure they don't run, uh, run out before I pass away. And then finally, I'd love to be able to make life easier for my kids and provide a legacy to them. This is the scenario with planning. This slide here reminds me of a gal. This goes back a good number of years ago. Um, it was a seminar that I did at, at, at a restaurant, maybe a college. I don't remember exactly what. But anyway, she's dressed to the nines. You know these kind of folks. They walk in, they look like they've got their act together. You know, Louis Vuitton purse, fingernails all polished up, hair's done perfectly, whatever, walks with confidence. At the conclusion of the seminar, she did agree to come in and visit with me just for a second opinion and review. And we sat down and we visited and taken in all the information and that kind of thing and discovered she had roughly nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars and she was getting ready to retire. And so as we went through a risk analysis, kind of looked at her, her funds and where she was invested, we had a quick conversation about maybe you should take some of the risk off the table. Maybe you should move some of those dollars into a more safer position since you're so close to retirement. Sadly, I don't know if that's a way to put that or not. One of her goals was to get her account value worth a million. She always wanted to be worth a million dollars. And so that was a big deal for her. Well, she took it under my thought process, under advisement, went back to her other advisor that she would been talking to before. Of course, he or she basically said, stick with it. We'll get you to the million dollars. Well, this particular scenario happened years ago in the year 2008. And if you can all remember what happened in 2008, the market lost almost 40%. So I kept in contact with this gal and, you know, called her back. She had been in touch with her other advisor, other advisor, basically th saying things like, Hey, got to stay invested. It'll come back. Well, she wanted to retire. If you remember this, her account rather than worth $960,000 had dropped clear back to just a little bit over $600,000. I can promise you her retirement picture changed greatly goals, aspirations. She thought she was going to be able to do, had to be changed completely. So again, if you're approaching retirement, risk is a big deal and you need to have that evaluated, which as we go to the next slide here, what I find all the time when I ask people about the risk class, what, hey, how much risk are you taking in your portfolio? Without missing a beat, typically people say, well, I'm very conservative. Um, I don't, I don't take a lot of risk. I'm not, I know I've got this, I've got that. But when we look at it, when we break it open like an oven and peel the layers back like an onion, we find out that everything they have is in the market. Well, what does that mean? The brokerage, there's only three places, ladies, you can put money. One is a bank, two is some sort of an insurance product, or three is brokerage. And brokerage are, are things that there's no guarantee. They can't even guarantee zero. What do I mean by that? It means you can lose money past zero and you could potentially lose the whole thing. So this is the slide we talk about. Your, here's your current situation and your desired risk level. Earlier in the program, I talked about your risk number. So Michaela is gonna put up there as an offer there, um, your risk number. It goes from one being the least. So let's say you drive a car when you when the speed limit's 55, you're a little aggressive, maybe you drive 65, maybe even 70, you might be aggressive. Or maybe when the speed limit's 55, you're just like, I'm towing the line, I'm a 55 driver, maybe you drive slower. So that's kind of what this is. You need your number and that's what I'm gonna to provide to you. We're gonna give you some time to, you can click on that and get that. We'll get that, I will get that delivered to you, a your risk number. It is so important Then apply it to your current uh, portfolio you have. You may be a 99, which is the highest risk and a number one, which is the absolute lowest risk. I've never seen anybody at a 99. I've not seen anybody at, at a one either, but somewhere in between there, you need your risk number and I'd be glad uh, to provide that for you. But again, talking about a uh, risk, they don't really, folks typically don't have an answer to what their risk level is. They don't really know what to do if the market had a quick correction. We talk about correlation. Well, what's correlation? Well, if I own Apple stock here and I own Apple stock here and they both go up, hey, I'm happy. But if they both go down, I'm not so happy. That's They're correlated. What you need is an investment. If this one goes up, maybe this one goes down and this one goes up and this one goes down. That's a diversification that a person should have. That's true diversification. So those are some, some analytics that we try to uh, strive for 
when working with you, you know, buy and sell discipline. What are you going to do if interest rates rise? How's that going to affect your portfolio? What are you going to do if interest rates go down? Um, what's your buy discipline? What's your sell discipline? Why, when are you going to make changes? These sorts of things. Do you know that? These are things that you should have a conversation about. And of course, I would certainly do that with you. Maybe for the first time in history, there's a new generation. As you see this slide here, it's called the sandwich generation. If you're out there, ladies, and you're married, you have your folks and you have your husband's folks. And in this scenario, you may end up having to take care of both sets of parents, adult parents. Maybe they move in with you, but nonetheless, you're helping take care of that. On the kids' side of things, um, I suppose we all got opinions about this. My kiddos live with me still. I mean, in some ways, I want to gently boot them out. College is going on right now. Um, but I hope they move out and, and, and are successful enough and don't move back. But that's not always the case. Some kids never leave. Some kids leave and then they come back. Nonetheless, you might be in the sandwich generation, in which case all of this is distracting to your financial and retirement plan. That's what I'm here to help you out with. I'm, I can take some of that stress out. I can help be a, a strategic partner for you in your retirement and putting all of that together. So as, as you look at this slide, I don't know if you can tell what it is, but basically it's, it's we're looking top down at a junk drawer. And in a junk drawer, you all have these in your house. I have one myself. <laughs> um, there's some duct tape. Don't know how that got there. There's some wires running all throughout. There's some uh, rubber bands. Oh, here's a, a, a an apple core. You know, why that got in there, how it got in there, anybody's guess. Pens, uh, needles, um, you know, hair clips, what a mouse is in there. I mean, this is the junk drawer of stuff. This is what I find oftentimes when people come in and visit with me. They've got a fi They've got finances. They've got accounts, but they really don't know what they're for. Um, they've got a junk drawer of financial products. They've got an IRA, a 401k, a CD, a money market, this stock, that stock. Well, how is this going into a plan? How you, which one are you going to draw off of when you retire? How long can you draw? How much can you draw off it? Is it taxable? Is it non-taxable? Could you put it in a non-taxable spot? What ideas do you have to avoid taxation? How is inflation going to affect that? They don't have a plan. It's just a bunch of it's a junk drawer of financial products. So it's my job to help organize that. You probably went through your junk drawer, got all your pins together, maybe put a rubber band around them, probably took the apple core and threw it in the trash, but you cleaned up your junk drawer. That's my job to come alongside you and help you. I'll give you a perfect example of kind of all of this, ladies. Just recently in the last 60 days, I had a call from a gal in Arizona and I do have clients all over the United States. My client lives in Arizona. She called me. Actually, she referred me to a friend. The friend called me and she's she's uh, widowed. Interestingly, 10 years she's waited to do anything, primarily because she was fearful of doing the wrong things and couldn't find somebody she trusted. I get it. I'm 49 years of age. For me, anyway, that's enough time to get taken, uh, to have some sort of somebody steal my credit card, steal my credit card number, charge things to my credit card, steal money, you know, have a construction project to your house where you pay them and they leave, don't come back and do the work. I get it. I get the skepticism. That's why I showed you the picture of myself at the beginning. I'm here in Springfield. I'm a real person, all those kinds of things. All right. So ladies, um, as we look to kind of wrapping this up tonight, if there's anything that I can do or one thing that, that, that we could do for you, if there's just one thing, let us help you put an income plan together. Even if we don't end up working together long term, I can sit down, we can apply an income plan. Okay, you could do money from there. You could take money from there. This is how the taxes would apply, all these kinds of things. Now, some of this in the midst of this, if you are married and you're sitting here, um, you might be thinking to yourself, how in the world am I going to get my husband involved with this? Um, well, I've been doing this a few years. Um, there's some ways to do it and there's some ways not to do it. One way not to do it is walk into the room at, when he's watching a Lakers game, maybe he's watching a baseball game, maybe, I don't know what he enjoys doing, but if he's in the thralls of something, you don't probably want to walk in that room and say, hey, Jack, you're going to come on this 15 minute phone call and listen to Todd. It's probably not going to be too good. Um, so the way you might do it is go in there, sit down with him sometime and say, hey, honey, you know, I love you. 
and I know you love me and we're going to be as married um, for however long we live. But I'm worried about something. Statistically speaking, there's a chance that I'm going to outlive you. And if that happens, I need a plan. And I'm not saying the plan that we don't have a plan or if we do have a plan, I'm just sharing. I'd like to have a 15 minute phone call with Todd. I listened to him for about, I don't know how long we've been on here, about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it is, 45. And we can have a, four, a 15 minute phone call just to kind of review things to make sure we're on track. Maybe we don't even need to make any adjustments. Maybe we do need to make some adjustments, but it would make me feel good because I may be the one left holding the bag, um, statistically speaking. And I want to have that phone call. Would you do that with me? Ladies, what I just said, is it true? It's 100% true. And there's kind of an epiphany that's taken place in the midst of doing these programs for ladies. You're the one going to be managing all of this money. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but it is certainly a reality that you're looking at. And if you're single, widowed, or divorced, you're already looking at it. And that's where I can come along and help you have a second opinion and help you out with things. Five criteria for an advisor. I don't know whether to put this slide in here or not, but listening, you know, you need an advisor to listen. And I've sat here in the act for the last 45 minutes. I'll just share this. When I sit down and visit with people, by the way, in dealing with the COVID thing, we can have Zoom meetings. Uh, the gal in Arizona, we did Zoom in. She's seen every single thing that we did on the computer. She was able to sign paperwork right on the computer. She was able to see everything that we were signing worked beautiful. So we can do that today. You don't have to wear a mask. I don't have to wear a mask. You don't have to worry about hand sanitizer or any of that craziness. Um, and as far as time, we can take as much time as you need, whether it's two months, uh, six months, eight months, as long as we're moving forward positively for you and your family, I'm totally cool with that. Open and honest. I think that's earned. Um, I, how do you convey to somebody being open and honest? Um, that's just time, I think, you know, Respond in a timely manner. Same gal in Arizona. I, the, this is second nature to me, but I, I can't remember the exact time. It was either two or three o'clock. And when I called, it was exactly on the button. She was like, awesome. Um, you're, you're very punctual. And she was so appreciative of that. I take that for granted, but I think that's a lost thing happening. Maybe the millennials, the younger people, Michaela's going to get mad at me for saying that, but they, they may not be as punctual as we used to be, right? Or that we are and, and they should be. Speaking clearly, I'm still getting better at that. Every day that I, I, I get older, I, I hope that I'm speaking more clearly. Um, and then create a retirement income plan. I would love to be able to sit down with you, create that income plan. So what to expect? We're kind of at the end of the program here tonight, ladies. Um, at the right there, again, schedule your 15-minute retirement strategy uh, phone call. So when we get on the call, I'll call you at the number you provide. We're simply going to go through this questionnaire. We're going to talk about these, um, these items and answer any questions that you have. Pretty simple. Thank you, ladies, for being on the call today. I'm going to leave this up now for the next five minutes uh, where you can take time and, and schedule your 15-minute your, uh, retirement strategy phone call. Thank you all very much. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon.